Now let's talk about modeling linear relationships. This is just given the real world, uh, any scenario that's described, how would you take what's given and use that to create the equation of a line? Sometimes the sentences will essentially be giving you two points, or maybe there will be a graph that's essentially giving you two points or something that's describing the slope and an intercept or something like that. And given that description, you then have to use both your knowledge of translating and your knowledge of how you create the MX plus B from two points to then create the MX plus B. So let's take a look at a couple examples. First, the population of Mexico is 400 in the year 2012 and 550 in the year 2015. Find the population of Mexico, T years, from 2010. All right, that's our question. So first of all, the main thing to do here is to turn this into math. So first of all, what's the y equals mx plus b that we're trying to find? Now, t being the number of years is kind of giving us a little bit of a clue. If we were to graph this out, we probably would do something like, all right, t is our x-axis, and the y-axis is the population. We could call it t or something. And really, it's like starting off with some value and it's increasing by a certain amount. And, you know, we're just trying to find that mx plus b, but the x is really called t here. Now, it's really tempting looking at this to say, all right, the points that we're given, because one thing we do want to do is turn this paragraph into essentially two points, right? So to turn these into two points, it might look like one point is, all right, the population is 400 in the year 2012. First of all, it might be accidentally tempting to be like, oh yeah, 400 comma 2012. But first of all, keep in mind, the X value is the year, not the population, right? The population is the Y. So this would be the Y, this is the X. So if anything, it'd be flipped. But further, it's not actually 2012, because let's think about what our, our X variable is. Our X variable isn't years since the beginning of time, or years since the year of zero AD. It's years since 2010. So since it's years since 2010, 2012 is actually just t equals 2. So this point, the fact that the population is 400 in 2010 is actually the point 2 comma 400. So 2 comma 400 is really the point. So looking at this, a so long story short, looking at this paragraph, the first thing we're taking away from it is, all right, the line that I'm trying to find contains a point two comma 400, meaning two years since 2010, the population is 400. And the other point that it contains is 550 for the Y value and 2015, which is five years since 2010. So five comma 550. So that is, those are the two points that I'm being given. And so now I just want to find an MX plus B out of that. Well, let's use our mathematical tools, rise over run. So the slope M is 550 minus 400. So that's just going to be one. I'll just write this out. 550 minus 400 over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 2. So that's going to be 150 over 3, which is 50. Which kind of makes sense because, hey, if the two points are 2 comma 400 and three years later, the population is 150 more. Well, then that means it's basically growing by 50 per year, right? So looking at this, like this. So yeah, three years later, if it's 150 more, that's uh, the slope of 50. So anyway, the slope is 50, and now we can use either point. Let's just use this first one uh, to find the intercept. So in our y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, we can essentially plug in y, m, and x, right? So we could plug in that our y is 400, our m is 50, and our x is 2, and 50 times 2 is 100, subtract 100 from both sides, and that's 300, our b is 300. So our final answer is y equals m x plus b, which is 300. But again, if we're reporting the answer, we should be careful because the variable here wasn't called uh, x, it was called t. So you'd say our population P was 50T plus 300. And again, you can kind of verify your answer that this worked because, you know, plug in T equals 2 and you'll get 400.
plug in two equals five, and you'll get 550. And so you know that you did it correctly because that situation described earlier is represented in our line. Let's do one other example here. So let's say you're given this graph, this graph where, all right, basically the cups of lemonade that you sell is on the x-axis and your profits based on that is on the y-axis. You're also on this graph given this information that this y-intercept is negative 15. You can kind of think of that as even if you sell zero cups of lemonade, it costs you 15 bucks to set up shop and so your profit is negative 15, all right. And it also gives you this one point that when you are when you sell 150 cups of lemonade, your profit is 60 bucks. So given all this, the question is find the break-even point or in this case, what's called the um, x-intercept, which is the x value where the y is zero. So find that point. And in the process, really, find the equation of the line, find the mx plus b. So first of all, let's find the mx plus b. We're basically given two points. We're given the point when x is 0, y is negative 15. And we're also given the point when x is 150, y is 60. So given these two points, let's first find the slope, rise over run. So the uh, rise over run, oh, I'm sorry, this would be, oh, yeah, no, this is fine. So, yeah, so the rise over run would be, 60 minus negative 15 over 150 minus zero. So that's going to be 75 over 150, which is a half. So the slope is a half. And the y-intercept, we already know it, it's negative 15. So our equation is simply going to be y equals uh, 1 half x minus 15. So that's the equation representing the profits based on our cups of lemonade. And now we can answer the question, how many cups do we got to sell? Meaning what is x when y is zero? So when y is zero, one half x minus 15, we could solve for this. Add 15 to both sides, multiply two to both sides, and you get 30 equals x. So there you go. So that means here that x should have been 30 when y is zero. So notice, after you use that information, either in the graph or the sentences, to come up with the mx plus b, you can use that to answer interesting questions about the real world, like what's your break-even point, or in what year will the population hit a certain value, and things like that.